So we've been working on deriving a relationship that relates the output autocorrelation function of a linear system to the input autocorrelation function associated with the random process x of t. We did the special case of a wide sense stationary random process only. We did the special case of a time invariant system only. We've put both these constraints together simultaneously and we're ready to do kind of this final step to work through piecing this together to get this final input-output relationship that we want. So if we consider both wide sense stationary random input processes and time invariant systems simultaneously, here are the final steps that we need to do. So recall, we had this expression on the end of the last video, the autocorrelation function of the output random process r sub y of tau is equal to this integral expression. And remember, the cross-correlation function the cross-correlation between the random process y of t and x of t, we have already figured out that when we have a wide and stationary input random process in a time invariant system, this can be written as a simple convolution. So that's one thing to recall. So what we're going to do here is we're going to introduce what we call h tilde of beta, and all this is, is a time-reversed version of the impulse response. So h tilde is h of negative beta. It's just a time-reversed version of the impulse response. There's not a great reason to define this, except for the fact that it's going to simplify the mathematics here, resulting in a really nice final expression. But I don't know that there's anything especially significant about this function in particular, except that it helps us with the math. So if h tilde is just the time reversed, then that means that h of beta is equal to h tilde of negative beta. So if we swap that out in our integral expression, we can rewrite this integral our expression for the autocorrelation function of y like this. And then let's go ahead and do our change of variable, same type of thing we've been doing over and over and over again. If we let alpha be negative beta, then that means d alpha is negative d beta. When beta is negative infinity, that means alpha is infinity. And when beta is plus infinity, that means alpha is negative infinity. So we can rewrite our integral now in terms of the dummy variable of integration alpha like this, and the reason we like this a little bit better, because it's a little bit more clear, that this is a convolution integral, right? That looks just like the convolution of h of alpha with the other function, the cross-correlation function. So this is a convolution integral. So this looks like the convolution of h tilde with our cross-correlation function. So we can write it just like this. But then recall the blue writing up here. We already know that we can write the cross-correlation function itself as a convolution. So if we substitute that in, we have the time-reversed impulse response convolved with the impulse response convolved with the autocorrelation function of the input random process. So I was very careful there when I said that this last time. The input random process has an autocorrelation function. If anywhere in these videos I talked about the input autocorrelation function to the linear system, that's technically not correct, correct, because what we're really putting into the linear system is a random process, and associated with the random process is the autocorrelation function rx of tau. Sometimes I get a little sloppy, though, and talk about the input autocorrelation function, but that's not exactly true, because this is not what we're putting into the linear system. This is just a function associated with the random process x of t. So we have this really nice final expression here. A lot of books define this function right here, the convolution of h with its time reverse copy. They sometimes define this as f of tau or g of tau. So different books do different notations there. But if you call that another signal, you can write this down a little bit more compactly. One thing that's nice about this signal, either f of tau or g of tau, however you want to define it, is it's always an even function. And that just follows because of the way that this is constructed. This is the time-reversed copy of this signal. So you're guaranteed to always end up with an even function for f or g, depending on whatever book's notation that you use. Since rx of tau is also an even function, that means what we really have here is an even function convolved with an even function. So that's also going to be an even function like it needs to be. So no surprises there, just kind of a little bit of a sanity check. So if we want to choose f of tau as a representation, we end up finally with this equation. Anytime I have a linear time invariant system with an input to that system that's a wide sense stationary random process, I can easily compute the autocorrelation function of the output random process by just doing some convolutions. All I have to do is construct f of tau, which I can compute by convolving the impulse response of the system with the time-reversed version of the impulse response, and then take that f of tau and convolve it with the autocorrelation function of my input random process. So this 
equation right here in the green box is what we've been looking for. And we're finally done deriving this input-output relationship.